I'm about to start making a lot of YouTube videos, so I have a feeling I'm gonna to wanna to reference this one a lot. And what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna show you everything that I carry around in my pencil bag. And I'm gonna do a brief little demonstration to show you what each tool does on this wonderful masterpiece right here. That's a completely original thought. It's Girl with the Pearl Smudge. So let me go ahead and show you the different tools that I use. Over here on the right, we have the ways that we lay down graphite, our pencils, blending stumps, graphite powder, and a couple of rags and toilet paper for smudging. And then over here on the left, I have erasers and a couple of other miscellaneous things that we'll cover in just a second. Now, by all means, you do not need any of this stuff other than one tool to draw with and one sheet of paper. What I like to use, if I was to just pick one single tool, it would be a mechanical pencil. Doesn't matter what kind of mechanical pencil you use, I just happened to pick one by Uniball. I recognize the name, so I got this one. It has the eraser inside and you don't have to ever sharpen it, which is the benefits of having a mechanical pencil. And I have two different mechanical pencils in here because I have two different shades of graphite in each one of these. On the one on the left, the lighter shade, I use 2H graphite. And this is gonna be the lightest shade of graphite that I use, and I don't, I don't actually use it very often. It's whenever I need to go really, really light and get some really nice fine details. But again, I have to be really light handed with it and I don't really use it very often. It might be the last final touches or if I needed to just do a quick sketch and I wanted to do something as a sort of an underlying sketch in here and I was trying to get maybe the sleeves or something and I'm just sketching very lightly. That's another reason why I might use the 2H, but I don't use it often. Then I use 2B. It's the darkest shade of graphite that they really make for the 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencils. And I like to use Faber-Castell just because it matches the drawing pencils I use. There's really no other reason that I'm using this brand other than I like the pencils over here and I've had it for a long time, so. I've just kind of stuck with them, tried and true, right? And so I end up having the 2B in that mechanical pencil, but I also have 2B as a regular pencil as well. And this is probably my second most used pencil. You know what? Actually, I'd say it'd be my third most used pencil. I don't use a lot of different shades of graphite because I really don't think that I need it. I can go from very, very light with just a very light touch to something much darker just by the amount of pressure that I use. So I don't feel like I always need that sort of 2H graphite or that very light graphite that I get in here because I can just be very light with this. Then I have the 4B pencil, which is just so they can get a little bit darker. That's what I think I drew all these sort of outlines with is the 4B pencil and then 8B. And <laughs> There it goes. And then I have my 8B pencil. This one I use so much that I actually carry a second one in my bag so that I don't have to keep sharpening the same pencil over and over and over and over. It saves me a little bit of trouble just having two in my bag that I can sharpen both at the same time and just kind of be done with it. So beyond the pencils, I've got my blending stumps. And I just, just like uh, I use a couple different things for making my pencil marks either nice and wide or I use something very detailed like the uh, mechanical pencil, I do the same sort of thing with my blending stumps. I've got nice and wide so I can lay down a very big area of shade quickly. And then I have the finer ones so that I can get in just little smaller places like the eyes. These things are so cheap, easy to replace. I think I spent maybe like six, seven dollars, and now I, I think I have something like 50 of these. It's ridiculous. Very, very cheap, easy to get. But besides that, I really like to use my graphite powder. I made another video on graphite powder. I'm not gonna go through all of that here, but I really like to take my graphite powder, which is basically pencil that I've used on some sanding paper. And then that's allowed me to get my graphite powder into dust. and so check out that other video, links up here, but I use a makeup sponge, I dip it into my graphite powder, and that lets me get a nice big block of graphite down quickly. And the other cool thing is 
what I use to make the graphite powder is even darker than that 8B, the darkest pencil that we have over here. This is 9B, so it comes in these graphite sticks and then I shave it down to be into powder, right? And then I can get really nice big blocking in areas with just a makeup sponge and the graphite powder very quickly. You can see how much darker this background has gotten with very minimal effort. Right, so that's what I use that for. Then I use toilet paper. Toilet paper is my kind of, before I ever used makeup sponges, I was always using toilet paper. It just seemed way better than tissue paper. Tissue paper seemed too smooth. And the toilet paper seemed like it could pick up the graphite and also move it around a lot better than something like facial tissue paper. So I like to use toilet paper. It helps get rid of pencil lines and different smudges and it's a nice way to sort of blend everything together if you want sort of that more even look throughout your entire drawing. I do have a lint-free cloth. Um, sometimes I use this just back and forth and that's just to kind of dust it off without getting my fingers all over this. I should use one of those little spray air cans or um, I know that you have like the little puff balls for your keyboard and I have one of those, I just never seem to have it whenever I need it for drawing, so I never seem to use that. Over here on the left, we have a few different types of erasers. We've got my favorite one, which is the kneaded eraser. And I like this because it's an eraser that you can mold into lots of different shapes. You can make nice, simple, flat edges with it so that you can try and get your highlights right on the edge, or you can just use it like a big, huge, clump and get lots of area at one time. Also, the other benefit is whenever you stretch it back and forth and you do this lots of time, then it's going to start to get really puffy at the end of the eraser. And I really like to use this on skin tones, or skin tones, on skin, so that you can get those nice textures that skin has. And so you can play around with these different erasers like the kneaded eraser and get a lot of different uses out of it. That's why it's probably my overall favorite go-to eraser. Now, the other eraser that is the most common one is just your standard rubber eraser. This normally is white, it looks like this, but I use mine all the time. And then if I ever need to make this a white eraser again, then that's what I use something like this guy over here for. So this is a little exacto knife type thing and it's just a little pen razor and i could just trim off the end of it and get a nice white eraser again so that's what i use the knife for it's always to trim my erasers you can also use it a lot of people like to use it to sharpen their pencils i don't particularly like to do that i'd rather just use my electric pencil sharpener and then so with this eraser it's just the most common eraser for getting those bright highlights you can really push into the paper and it's not gonna hurt the paper. The eraser's gonna start to peel off first and make your little eraser smudges. It's say dust-free, which, you know, um, kinda is not really true. You get all the little eraser shavings no matter what you do, it seems like, but this is a great eraser for just getting in those different highlights that I want to be really, really bright. And that's why I like using the rubber eraser. Then I have my electric eraser. The electric eraser is a small rubber eraser, just in the very, very tip of this. And this is great for just pressing down on the top here on this little button, for going in and getting those little spots of highlights, just what I need right in those eyes. And the reason why we use an electric eraser is just to get really, really precise and to get those little itty bitty highlights that might be really hard to actually erase if you have to move an eraser back and forth. So the electric eraser is just spinning rapidly so that I don't have to go back and forth to erase something like I would have to do with some of these other erasers. In fact, the next eraser is just like the electric eraser. It's very similar even in shape, but it's a non-electric version of that. And this is called the Tombow Mono Zero. I don't know if other companies sell erasers like this, but they make two different shapes that I know of, a more square shape and a round shape. 
the square one is not often used by a lot of people, but it's a way that I like to just get those nice little tiny edges, those little edge highlights in there. Seems to work out pretty good for me. Most people do prefer the round one. This is just the general overall great tool for being very accurate in your eraser. And it's like you're using a pen or pencil just as an eraser because of its shape. So a uh, very nice little tool, highly recommend that. Then we have uh, just a few more things left. We've got this little guy. This is just for taking the pencils once they get nice and short from having used them after a long time, especially these 8B pencils. Then we just drop it in there and we have a pencil extender. So that way, once the pencil's small, I still have kind of a normal size pencil. And I keep this in my bag. I don't often get too low. I would go back and probably switch pencils before I got too low, but just in case, I have one of those in there. Roller, because you never know when you might need it. An electric pencil sharpener, very straightforward. Can sharpen lots of different sizes. There's different size pencils. I only ever use this one size. And it does a fine job. It doesn't always do a great job, as you can see. It just sort of picked away that. The other thing that I would probably have an issue with is this electric eraser. I don't prefer this because with the button being on the outside, whenever you throw this in a pencil case, it ends up hitting this button a lot. And you just hear this noise and it sounds like you have your electric toothbrush or electric razor or something going off in your bag. And it's just that running out of juice, so. And the very last thing I have on this desk are these alligator clamps. And I mostly use these with my sketchbook so that whenever I have pages sticking up like this that I wanna draw on, I can take an alligator clamp, maybe grab a couple of other pages and just put it on the side and with the weight of that clamp, it'll lay down. So I keep two so I could do that. One on each side makes it really nice and easy and keeps my paper flat. And if you are interested in the paper that I use, I have this video right here for you to check out on the paper that I use to make this entire sketchbook.